I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the new Trishimi, the tier 9 premium destroyer from the Soviet line. And uh, as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, all button below. Appreciate all the support in the channel. Can't thank you guys enough. I 4,000 subs, doing another premium giveaway. So here we go, right off the bat in the rank season here, tier 9, uh, tier 8 in Silver League, going up against the uh, tier 8, tier 9 kind of uh, mantra. And it's pretty, really fun. Enjoy it. And now let's take a look at the new Trishimi, how it does. We'll talk about a little bit what it is. First engagement right here. Initially, just going right into Alpha, the contested zone. See, Charlie is a free cap right there. Now we're just going to take two destroyers into Alpha. Again, we are met, met by two destroyers at Alpha. And we're going to take the Nutrishimi at uh, the uh, onslaught of the Akazuki and the Grunigan. So very, very powerful ships. Akazuki, one of the he great, I would say, gunboats of the Japanese line for Tier 8. Very, very powerful. And right now, you're going to see the onslaught of what it can do with help. So the split is peeling off, peeling off from alpha. That's that's totally fine. Be conservative. Notice the enemy is not in alpha cap right now. Again, we have an exit strategy. If we do get engaged, we can definitely uh, egress to the west and to the south. In that, it gives us an option. If torpedoes are coming at us, keeping a quarter speed in to make sure we have enough momentum moving forward that we are able to egress the area. But we're going to go ahead and take the cap. I don't see a threat. I don't see a danger. Assessed it. We take it. We peel off right at this point. No need to stick around in the cap. Uh, potentially either getting, but there is no radar in this one, so potentially getting bum rushed, torpedo rushed, or hydro. So, ooh, we get the first kill right there. Devastating strike. Again, that is a lesson right there for destroyer players. Do not sit broadside in smoke. It is a magnet for torpedoes. Very, very deadly and not very um, a wise thing to do. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, what else we can do. We had the Groningen is the Tier 9 version of the Friesland, or Tier 9, basically small end, two-gun kind of build concept. No, tor no torpedoes, no radar, just a hydro, five kilometers. So right now he's being radared by the split, which is bad. Now he gets spotted. Now look at the guns on the Nutrishimi. Very, very great shell ballistics, great arc angles. Uh, they have 950 meters per second coming out of the barrel. Very, very powerful. What they do, 130 millimeter guns that do about 22 millimeter uh, pen damage, which is just enough for what you need to do out there. And again, it's kind of like that Grozovoy, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Kabarov's uh, caliber guns. Unfortunately, there's only two of them, so you only get four barrels total. Um, two on two gun mounts that are back turret is 360, which is a good thing for uh, nosing in and uh, trying to engage. Uh, and more of a nose in aspect, but also does very well when you're in retreat and egress or kiting way mode. And uh, we're going to test out, look at, take a look at what we can do right here. We're trying to set fires to uh, battleships. Very, very strong in that regard. Now, the Mogador actually takes a poke in as well. I'm not sure what they're trying to do. Probably trying to bully the cap, pushing in. They think they have numbers right here. Unfortunately, with kiting away ships right here, it's very, very difficult to actually engage, especially with uh, ships that are in smoke, kiting away, and even further back in the range. So Mogador not able to engage us successfully there. No, here's my thought process strategy. I have two battleships that are trying to push in with two destroyers screening in front of them. We're going to try to set fires. Now, the neutral should be just like the Grosvenor and Cabras, are very, very good fire starters. Uh, high caliber guns, 130 millimeters, a little bit higher than normal, uh, the most destroyers out there. But they do phenomenal jobs of doing what you need to see you're doing right here. As a gunboat DD main, I'm really just trying to hit that superstructure and take damage and start fires. Now, we know we're not getting too much on the Musashi here, getting eight non-pens, as you can see at the top right there. Well, we did start a fire. That's very, very crucial and important. Yep, points are ticking up, which means we're getting passive income damage on the fires. Now, we're going to switch over to the Palmer. And Palmer right here is going to basically nose in and stop. So, not really understanding the thought process and logic of this one, but... Uh, if I was him, I would be either turning away or turning egressing at least at full speed to give myself the ability to avoid what I'm doing right here, which is torpedoes. So anytime I see destroyers in front of me, I'm assuming torpedoes right off the bat. I need full speed to maneuver. You can't maneuver at a dead man's crawl. Very, very difficult. He elects to shoot at it, which is good. He wasted his shot on us. It's not going to do much to us. Again, very. Uh, the cool thing I like the, the Soviet kind of line is you get the heals. 
Uh, trying to kill like Kabarov, the Nutrishimi, uh, Grozovoy, and even the Zerki and everything. Very, very difficult. I call them zombie ships because not only is their armor and everything about the, the ship is very difficult to hit and absorb damage, you get a decent amount of hit pulls and you get the, the zombie heals, the improved heals that just bring the ship back to life. And it's very, very important. And right here, you can see the power of the torpedoes right there. And boom, splash two. He goes down. 86,000 damage right there. And he takes his final breath shot at us, not at our teammates, which is exactly what... I believe this line really, really excels at. Kabarov, Nijishimi, Grosovoy, very good at taking shots, take, drawing fire, and absorbing a lot of damage, and I like that a lot. Uh, kind of like the Mogador Club Air style, like you can see we're here. They're doing long-range gunboating, difficult to shoot at with the speed, French saturation. Uh, a lot of the key aspects of the French and Soviet line I do appreciate in that regard, especially for the open-water gunboat DDing uh, as well. So as you can see right now, what's the uh, play of the game for ranked here? Again, I'm not talking to much of my teammates. I'm just kind of clicking on the mini map and telling them, hey, this is what we're doing. Focus fire on this person and so forth. Mogadar's running away. Musashi's pu pushing in. Nobody left to defend Charlie. So I got two destroyers at Alpha. My intention is to go back to Charlie and help out my team right there, but not after we blow up a sitting battleship like the Musashi. So while we're shooting down the Musashi and burning them down, let's talk about what the uh, Tier 9 Premium Russian destroyer Nutrashimi is. Help me if I am mispronouncing that. It's very similar to the Tier 10 Russian uh, destroyer Grozovoy in the regular tech tree. While Nutrashimi has one less turret than Grozovoy, Nutrashimi trades the missing firepower for better concealment. As you can see, our concealment right now is uh, 5 point... Uh, that's a little misconception. We're inside the smoke, I believe, right now, right? Yeah, we're inside the smoke. It's not a very good representation, but it is very, very good for what it does. It's basically sacrificing that gun power for concealment. And uh, once it pops up, yeah, 5.6. Very, very good for a destroyer line in tier 9, uh, and I do appreciate it. And basically, overall, it's a jack-of-all-trades ship, marrying the gunboat specs of the Soviet destroyer line, Japanese stealth, and American torpedo performance. The most obvious characteristics of this is the lack of main battery punch, only four barrels, like we talked about. It's more selective about when you use some neutral Shammy's main battery, as you can see right here. We're just basically trying to start fires and uh, trying to get the cap zones early in every match. With only two turrets of each gun, if one is knocked out, her shell weight obviously is half. The other hand, the neutral Shammy concealment is outstanding. Besting of the uh, uh, tier 10 Japanese destroyer Shimakaze stealth. This is very, very good for uh, unheard of among Russian destroyer lines. With Nutrishimi can use herself to get in the face of enemies and launch her torpedoes. So very good there. Now, the, un unlike uh, her uh, her counterparts, her new move heh, maneuverability is slightly better than the Grozovite, but she's still a bit more sluggish than some other tier nine counterparts. Nutrishimi boasts some of the most or sorry some of the best torpedoes among all Russian destroyers. The reload is long, but the top out at the range of only 10 kilometers. That's a lot better than normal the normal six that we're used to the experienced captains will you know find plenty of ways to get out work out of her now we're going to engage the uh, mogul over here on Unfortunately, the Mogador is basically engaged by, what, one, two, three, four ships. So this is just not a fair fight for him. But you know what? Never pick a fair fight if you're not uh, trying and you're not trying. So if you're trying to pick a fire fight, you're not trying at all. So anyways, uh, look at this. Just basically getting shot out. The gun ballistics are great. Uh, Mogador has that French saturation gimmick. So look, we're not doing as much damage as we want to. We're doing some kind of damage. Let's take a look if we're hitting anything else. There we go. A nice, eh, it's like 297 damage. Yeah, full saturation of the ship. Very difficult to hit the French DD line. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the, uh, let's see here, large lack of third per, uh, third barrel. Uh, she packs fewer 45 millimeter barrels in her mid-range aura. With a little bit of investment, her AE suite will commonly be dissuade other carrier planes and repeated attacks. But she will be bred the initial drop one or two against determined carriers, even with defensive five active. So just because it has defensive fire, like I said, AE is trash anyways. It does the best it can do. It can throw up a couple flat clouds, flat clouds and improve her damage per minute, but that's about it. The real strength of the neutral streaming lies in her consumables. Like you said, look at the bottom row there. It's got literally everything. Engine boost, heals, defensive fire, smoke. This is the jack of all trades of every destroyer. Every destroyer would love to have everything that you see in front of you right there, which is why I do select it. And it's very powerful. Even Kabaros has a lot of this stuff. That's why I'm picking it a lot more for clan battles and even for ranked and even uh, randoms, obviously, as a gimmick. As a gimme. Uh, you can see right here, torpedoes. Again, their torpedoes are doing what it needs to do, especially against these high-tier battleships. And look, the Vladivostok is going to select to fire at us rather than anybody else because we look. We have four players around here, and the, new, the Vladivostok is going to only shoot at us because why? I guess apparently he thinks we're a bigger threat, which we are. I'm just I'm showing the video right now. We are a big threat, and it doesn't. Uh, you know, doubt that, uh, hey, you finally shot at somebody else, but I'm in smoke. It doesn't, you know, surprise me that, you know, you being in the Nutrishimi Kabarovs or this Soviet line, you're probably the most deadly guy out there. And boom, splash three, he goes down as well. Power of the Nutrishimi right there sitting in smoke. 
This allows, uh, okay, real strength of uh, Nutrishmi is consumables. This allows Nutrishmi to play near the front line, supporting pushes and new objectives, which we showed you, whilst having options to d deter or disengage from combat when it becomes affordable. If timed correctly, the combined use of special repair teams, engine boost can increase her longevity in battle, where she can use her advantages to harass enemy counter pushes, hunt down enemy ships, or even still still back capture points at her leisure. In summary, this hybrid platform allows a lot of freedom on the high seas. Very, very, very powerful, as you can see right here. Now, this is available in the Armory for coal. I believe it's still 296,000 coal or more. Something around that line. Is it worth it? Absolutely. I think the Nutrishimi is still being dominated as one of the most powerful destroyers out there. Even the reload, 3.1 to 2.8 seconds, you can see right here with the gunboat, Fearless Brawler kicking in. I'm debating whether or not, since the concealment's so great, as whether or not I want to use the... Um, the RPF or RDF location finding on this ship because it is a powerful suite to know situational awareness. But again, you're sacrificing some one other point, whether it be range or firepower or reload. So I'm going back and forth between it. Uh, I don't know if the Soviet line really requires the uh, RPF, but again, I've always said it doesn't matter about the ship. It matters about the overall gameplay of the, the situation. The, are you a destroyer that's actually seeking uh, information and going out there spotting, uh, giving intel? Uh, taking over caps, hunting destroyers, doing all of the things that are required of a good destroyer player. So take this video with a grain of salt and, and you use it to make the best decision in your judgment and your personal opinion. For me, I do appreciate this gunboat a lot. It's very, very powerful what it can do. You can see it's performing as required, that everything I require right here. And do we get the skill? And boom, splash 437,000 damage, mopping up half the team right there in the uh, ranked battle season. It's very, very effective, very strong. And uh, I definitely, uh, if if you had the coal and the resources for it, I definitely recommend picking up the tier nine in your shimmy. It is still, still very, very powerful right there. You can see right there in the battle uh, assessment, 137,000 damage over 200 uh, hits, uh, seven torpedoes, four kills, obviously starting a lot of fires and resetting, and capturing. And again, exactly what the description we read. This is the basically a hybrid does it all kind of shift first in the team right there doing the amount of damage we had to do. And you can see, yeah, we did a lot of damage to the entire team, and then we, it just shines. And exactly the torpedo damage, look at that alone, 77,000 damage. Fires and guns starting about the same amount of damage as well. Very, very powerful potential damage. I've actually had in the Nutrishimi, Kabarovs, and Gross Foy up to 1 million to 1.5 million in potential damage, which means the enemy is launching about a 1.5 million uh, you know, points of ordnance at you, and it's very, very powerful in that regard. Uh, so, uh, again, let me know what your thoughts of the Tier 9 Nutrishimi me is it powerful is it good for clan battle season is it or sorry is it good for rank season at the tier 8 tier 9 level or is it even better at uh you know even more competitive or just randoms overall in general but it's very very powerful i definitely recommend it very strong gunboat very good dd hunter very good a concealment cap contester and actually just burning down cruisers and battleships as well so as always you guys stay safe out there if you see me out there say hi and again the build will be at the end of this video right here and i hope you enjoy it and let me know what your thoughts are and as always hope you guys take care and be safe cheers